My friends, this is Peter Beter. The other day I listened to a message by Tom Wilson called Common Sense and Your Last Chance to Use It. If you are one of those who still believe it couldn't happen here, then get ready for Tom Wilson to prove it is happening here. He does it by applying common sense to what we all see and hear every day. Here now is Tom Wilson. For much too long now we have been heckled, harassed, annoyed, and bewildered by the loud angry noise of political and public unrest. We have learned to live with the noises of our typical political bungling, but this noise is louder and much more frantic than usual. Today, on the eve of our 200th National Birthday, why aren't we just overflowing with the spirit of joyous celebration? Apparently something has gone wrong. People are shouting about all sorts of things. High taxes, inflation, unemployment, red tape, busing, shortages, and crisis after crisis. Now we even have a President and Vice President not elected by choice of the people, and we're shouting about that too. Well, why wouldn't we? More often than not, our top officials just add to the confusion. They disagree with one another on what ought to be done, and as often as not, they reverse their own opinions. They say, raise taxes, lower taxes. We have an energy shortage. No, we don't have. Interest rates are too high. No, they're too low. This sort of leadership, or lack of it, makes it appear obvious that as a whole they don't know what they're doing. But actually the problem we have on our hands is much worse than ordinary stupid bungling. It is the workings of a very deliberate plan against our governing system and against us the people. At this very moment our government, which is supposed to be of the people, for the people, and by the people, is in the process of being overthrown piece at a time. We the people are being willfully oppressed and misinformed so that very soon we will be duped into demanding a new governing system unless we wake up and stop it. If we allow ourselves to be tricked into doing this, we'll find ourselves bound as slaves under a new order of government and a new constitution. This whole mess we're in is engineered by a few individuals obsessed with greed and lust for power. They already have more than a fair share of money and material things, so now they want power to control our nation and us the people as they please, jiggle us like marionettes on strings to do their bidding. These power-crazed individuals will be referred to in this message as manipulators just to avoid using controversial expletives. The manipulator is a person who possesses power to control others through his ability to persuade, intimidate, indoctrinate, or legislate his authority over and above the will of others. The manipulator, because of his egotistical ability and his devious, underhanded ways, is a very dangerous parasite in our free golden rule society. He creates absolutely nothing of his own to share with us, and he has no actual power to produce anything of value. Instead, he uses the creative and productive efforts of others through his ability to influence and indoctrinate. Therefore, the manipulator is in control of vast resources of power, but actually his power is within our minds and our willing hands. He holds us in his power through the hypnotic illusion of his superiority as long as we are willing to let his mind do our thinking for us instead of using our own common sense. This conspiracy business may sound like a very fantastic sort of plot that couldn't possibly work here in our sound and solid United States of America, the sort of thing no one could get away with the sort of thing that happens only in a so-called banana republic. Well, it is happening here. It is happening now in these United States of America, happening to our government and happening to us, the people. No matter how fantastic it sounds, it is happening. 
They have had a new constitution in preparation for more than ten years. It has been carefully prepared to have a cosmetic appearance similar to that of our original document, but by legal interpretation it makes the people servants of federal authority instead of the federal government being a servant of the people. It is a complete legal legislative reversal of the spirit of government under which our nation grew up and achieved its greatness. If you stop and think about it, you very likely have noticed this reversal of our rights has been steadily increasing and becoming more oppressive as new policies and controls keep tightening federal authority over us. Our federal government has been infiltrated by the manipulators, and they are manipulating legislative measures that are deviating the spirit of government and the course of our nation. They are, a little at a time, taking away state and local authority by centralizing all control under federal authority. We are gradually being placed under more and more federal control so that when the manipulators at the top step into power with their new order, we will be helpless to resist their takeover. We are almost, but not quite, within their grasp right now. We have a little bit of time left in which to turn the tide of events in our favor because we are not yet sufficiently indoctrinated to accept a new order without resistance. We still have a loyal, patriotic remnant of our good federal authority left in some of the people working within our government, but this loyal remnant has become powerless to throw off the manipulators at the top unless we the people furnish powerful public opinion to back them up. They can turn the tide, but only if we do our part. It is within the power of the manipulators right now to create a national disturbance that would demand a declaration of martial law and thereby turn us into a police state. But they don't dare try this yet because they know that we are not really nearly as apathetic as we are made out to be. They know that the oppression we are suffering has made us into a bed of smoldering embers that could be fanned into a flaming revolutionary reaction against them. This is what they fear, so they are manipulating us very carefully but very steadily. We are facing the most serious threat to our personal rights and our personal security in the near 200 years of our national history. This is not like the wars we have fought outside our borders. This takeover plan is working right here inside our nation. The purpose of this message is to open your eyes to the manipulations that are going on right in front of you day by day, and then to outline exactly what you and the people of our nation have to start doing in order to stop it. What we've got to do to save our government, to save ourselves, and to preserve a worthwhile nation for our children to grow up in, a national home where they can be free, prosperous, and contented. The manipulators have over a long period of time been manipulating stocks, mergers, conglomerates, and monopolies to centralize all principal sources of supply for food, energy, and industrial supplies necessary for our survival. This together with the centralization of federal control has weakened our internal security and has also weakened our external security as a nation among a world of nations. Over-centralization lengthens supply lines and reduces local production and local stockpiling. Local sufficiency and self-support, to all extent possible, makes us much stronger internally as well as more defensive to external attack. Recently, our Secretary of the Interior flatly stated that the United States of America would not be able to defend itself if we had a war right now. We must put a stop to the federal government's meddling in things which are none of its business under the Constitution so it can efficiently perform the duties which are its business. Then we can get back to our business. Let's go back to our beginning and come forward from there. Only 200 years ago, the United States of America was still just an idea. But in the sum of just three average lifespans, our nation has grown from 13 British colonies into a great free nation of 50 states and about 230 million residents. 
Our unprecedented rapid progress came from the united constructive efforts of a free enterprise society. Individual incentive to build and to share has made our great progress possible. This kind of dedicated incentive can be found only in a nation of free people. Our founding fathers had been subjects of the great British Empire. They fought to win independence from a government in which their voice was not represented. They fought to be free from taxation without representation. They were inspired by their victory to create a governing system in which majority popular wishes of the people would be represented. Their system has worked well for almost 200 years. We live in a constitutional democratic republic, a representative form of government. Our representative democratic republic is not to be confused with a pure democracy system. The pure democracies usually become unstable and break down into dictatorships. The representative system, which has served us well from our beginning, should serve us well for another 200 years, but only if we preserve the original system in its true representative form. The manipulators have added certain amendments to our Constitution which deviate our system away from the original spirit of a truly representative form. They have also manipulated a complexity of legislation into our governing system which further supports the constitutional deviation. The 16th and 25th Amendments have brought about very dangerous departures from our solid original federal system. The 25th Amendment cleared a legal path that resulted in our now having a President and Vice President not elected by choice of the people. Most of the deviating legislation has been enacted in the form of federal controls over the multiple socialistic so-called benefit programs to meet a variety of public needs. Much of the manipulated legislation has resulted in creating more federal bureaus, departments, offices, agencies, authorities, and so on than we can think up good names for. But out of these, whatever you call them, come all of the oppressive federal laws, sometimes very softly referred to as guidelines. Well, barbed wire and fixed bayonets might also be referred to as guidelines. A great deal of the deviating and oppressive legislation has been signed into federal law without public knowledge. The manipulators attach a piece of legislation to an unrelated but well-supported bill being signed into law, thereby hiding their legislation under the skirts of legitimate legislative action. With this trick, they are able to get their regulations enacted into law without public knowledge or approval. By the time we find out about their manipulation, it has already been signed into federal law. Here is an abbreviated plan of what the manipulators are doing to us. First, promote, glorify, and increase federal control through numerous federal benefit programs for the people. Second, manipulate a breakdown in the federal system by making conformity to regulations oppressive and overbearing then blame federal breakdown on need for stronger federal control. Third, promote and glorify a new order of governing system under a new constitution that will provide stronger federal controls and thereby solve all of our problems. Perhaps an appropriate remark at this point would be, how diabolical can you get? Nevertheless, their plans are progressing exceedingly well for them at this time, and they will succeed if we do not take strong and immediate counteractive action. They are all set up with federal districts, federal offices, and lots and lots of federal employees, two and a half million of them. All they have to do now is increase federal pressure on us until we demand a new system. If we'll just wake up and look at what's going on around us and apply a little bit of common sense to what we see, we'll know better than to let the manipulators enslave us. We're not talking here about going from where we are now into a new governing system that might turn out to be a little bit oppressive. No, not at all. It's much worse than that. 
We're talking about losing all the freedom we still have and becoming slaves to a totalitarian police state dictatorship under the manipulator's new order and their new constitution. We are running out of time. Our decision and our counteraction has to be now if we are to have more than five years at the outside as a free nation and a free people. Our Federal system has become very much like a powerful runaway machine controlled by a power-crazy maniac. We elect Senators and Representatives to voice our opinions in the Federal Houses of Government, and we expect them to turn our majority preferences into Federal recognition and acceptance. Our elected Representatives more often than not would like to accomplish this recognition for us and would like to do for us what they so strongly proclaimed in their campaign promises. So why don't they do it? Well, for one thing, when they enter the gigantic Federal machine, they find that they must yield to its already established direction and momentum. The late Sam Rayburn, for 17 years Speaker of the House of Representatives, put it in these famous words. He said, Those who go along get along. To understand this a little better, stop and think about the last time you attended a circus or some other spectacular event. You're just caught up in the atmosphere and power of excitement. All else is of trivial importance at the time. The event is it above all else. Well, that's the way it is with the Federal Circus. There are the massive, expensive, impressive buildings and monuments standing on beautifully landscaped sites the chauffeured limousines, and the atmosphere of excitement and importance. In such an atmosphere, it doesn't really matter very much about the blistered hands, the sleepless nights, and the financial worries of the people back home who have to toil and earn a dollar at a time to pay for the show. No, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't seem to come to mind. There are lots and lots of people. No problem. The machine is the thing get into the machine, and sling the money and power around. Be important. Have a good time. What do the people back home know anyway? This is big stuff. Or as Harry Hopkins has been quoted as saying, tax and tax, spend and spend, elect and elect. The people are too damn dumb to understand." Unquote. These are the words of one of the very men who had the most to do with creating the so-called benefit programs of the New Deal. That is what our rulers really think of us. This sort of thing might lead you to believe that something is wrong with our basic system. This is exactly what the manipulators are trying to make us believe so that we will accept their new order of federalism and their new constitution. Please do not fall for their trickery. Instead, call your representative on the carpet or out behind the woodshed and read this off to him slowly. Watch him carefully. You'll know what to do with him. Just use your own common sense. Whatever you do with him will very likely represent majority public opinion. But however you do it, get him turned around and representing us for a change. If our representatives would only represent majority opinion, we would be in no danger of falling into the hands of a dictatorial Federal authority simply because we the people wouldn't stand for it. As it is now, we the people do not have our majority preferences represented. Instead, our elected Senators and Representatives are in the clutches of our manipulated Federal machine, and they think they have to go along with it to get along with it. They are caught up in the syndrome of the machine, and many of them do not realize that they are pushing through legislation that has been designed to undermine and weaken our basic structure. We must use our majority public opinion power to shake our representatives like shaking a disobedient child get their attention and firmly impress upon them that they were elected to represent us, the people, not to go along and get along with the machine run by deviating manipulators. A little farther along in this message it will be explained how our representatives and how we, the people, have been duped and indoctrinated into our present perilous circumstances. 
It is not a fault of our basic system that has us in trouble. Our problems are largely traceable to the fact that we are not adhering to our basic original system. Instead, we are being manipulated away from it quite deliberately. The manipulations have succeeded in increasing, one by one, federal regulations and federal controls over the people, while at the same time bypassing and weakening the authority of state, county, and municipal governing systems. Then how has all this been done? How has the original course of our federal system been altered? It has been accomplished by leading us, the people, to believe that our federal government is very rich and very generous, and that it has the power and the ability to give us all kinds of benefits and aid programs that we would not and could not have without their great wealth, generosity, and power to regulate these benefits. We've been sold a bill of goods, a bill of goods we can't afford, a bill of goods we have no way of paying for. In other words, we've been played for suckers. This brings up two more good questions. Where does the federal government get all that money, and how do they sell us a bill of goods like that? The answer to the first question is the 16th Amendment, manipulated into our Constitution in 1913. The entire amendment reads as follows, quote, Article 16, The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived, without apportionment among the several states, and without regard to any census or enumeration. End of quotation. These few words prove what drastic changes can be brought about by constitutional revision. They led immediately to establishment of what we know now as the Internal Revenue Service. The original tax rate set in 1913 was 1% on incomes of more than $3,000 for a single person or $4,000 for a married person, plus some surtaxes on much higher incomes. The corporate rate was also 1%. Most people in 1913 didn't make as much as three or $4,000 a year, and those who did were not hurt very badly by a 1% tax rate. Thus, the manipulators avoided provoking the kind of strong public reaction that could have scuttled their powerful new taxing tool right then and there. But years later, with their taxing power firmly in place, they began slowly jacking up the rates and the complexity. And look what we pay Uncle Sam today. Do we have any logical reason to think they'll stop where they are now? This answers the question about where the federal government gets all the money with which to do all these great things for us. They simply take our money. They take it by law, by intimidation, and by threat of imprisonment. No one has to tell you they take an awful lot of it. So their system is to take our money and then make us feel grateful by giving part of it back. But the system is like a leaky bucket. Before we get some of our money back in the form of various benefits, most of it has leaked out in handling and administrative costs. So they have to increase the taxes to put some more in the bucket. Sometimes they need more than we would stand for in a tax increase, so they go borrow some and only charge us the interest, for now, that is. It might be worth pointing out that in the first 137 years of our history as the United States of America, there was no ongoing federal income tax. In fact, until 1913, it was illegal under the Constitution. In that 137 years, under the law of supply and demand, and by a free enterprise system of public incentive and initiative, we crossed this nation in covered wagons. We built cities with factories and industries from coast to coast, and linked all this together with railroads, mail service, and a telegraph system. We started building automobiles in mass production, we were working on radio communication, and we were working on transportation by air. 
we took care of our business in building a free nation, and most of the time the federal government took care of theirs. They were able to manage very well on income from tariffs, duties, and a few excise taxes, all legal under the Constitution. We had built a mighty fine nation by 1913, but the manipulators had already started to work on the foundation of our federal governing structure like termites. Wherever something good appears, there will also appear a greed to grab it. This is a law by which animals survive. They don't create for themselves, they just grab what is already there. Unfortunately, in our human species, there are always a few among us who do the same. They do not create and share. They just take away from us what we create, earn, or accumulate. If they only do a little bit of this and they get caught at it, we call them petty thieves and lock them up. But if they're clever enough to do vast amounts of it and not be too obvious about it, we somehow get blinded by all that money, and we may tend to say, why, he's so rich he wouldn't steal. We tend to forget that a fat man eats more than a thin man, not because he needs it, but because he wants it and he's used to it. There is no way to set up a free society governing system to prevent the existence of greedy parasitic individuals, but there are effective laws by which they can be stopped from grabbing if we'll just use these laws. Now let's get into the question of how the manipulators are able to sell us on the idea of all the many federal benefit programs. An overly simplified answer is to say it is done with advertising. The simple basis of advertising is to publicize or display the merits of a product that will create a desire to have the product. One of the many often used gimmicks is to say the product is a bargain because it is so good it will pay for itself that you can't really afford to be without it. Most of us have some weakness for being suckered into a something-for-nothing deal, but if we stop long enough to think and use our own common sense, we know better. The manipulators know all the tricks of selling, and they know the best way to push their product is to flood our minds with such repeated blasts of advertising that we don't have time to think out the real value for ourselves between blasts. But you haven't noticed anything like this going on, have you? Likely not. This shows how clever they are. They're on every hour, on the hour, around the clock, and often present special interest programs presented as public service information. You see, we have developed a new tool for advertising that has never been available until quite recently, but like any tool, it can be used either constructively or destructively. The knife that slices a banana can also slice your finger off. This powerful new tool is the electronic communications media, in other words, the radio and television broadcasting networks. The manipulators have not only infiltrated our government, but they have gained control over most of our major communications systems, including newspapers and some magazines. They are also working through philanthropic foundations to influence our educational system. No doubt you like to be well informed about what's going on in our nation and around the world, so you may listen to some of the hourly newscasts on the major radio networks. A careful study of these newscasts has revealed a very interesting pattern of presentation. The importance of this pattern is understood best if you first stop to consider how our minds work and how our beliefs and personalities come to be what they are. This is the end of side one. The message will continue on the other side. Thank you. From the time we come into this world, our minds are seeking truthful information. This is necessary for our survival and for our contentment. We soon learn that sharp things stick and hurt, that hot things burn, and that some things taste good. Even at a very early age, our minds have stored a tremendous amount of truthful information from which we establish our own sense of values and our own kind of logical reasoning. 
From this personal evaluation of things comes our individuality, our attitude, and our personality. We are individuals because of the way we think, but we all have one thing in common. We seek the truth for survival and for contentment. Within each of us there is a voice of our own mind. It is our voice of conscience, voice of reason, voice of logic, and our voice of common sense. We receive some very good advice from our own voice of common sense when or if we take the time to be quiet and listen to it. Unfortunately, we are not able to think our own thoughts when distracted by outside interests like radio and television. It is very easy for us to let our minds become a slave of outside guiding forces through newscasts, entertainment spectaculars, and sports events. We may be in the presence of other persons while receiving outside information, but become too absorbed in the presentation to evaluate our own real opinions or discuss them with those nearby. The methods of high-pressure salesmanship and the methods used for indoctrination are really very closely related. Those who would sell us something explain only the features of their wares that they feel sure will appeal to our sense of desire in one way or another. This brings us back to the subject of national news presentation. The following is a typical sequence of the time spent on news and commercials during an hourly news broadcast. Federal level news, 50 seconds, followed by a commercial that takes 60 seconds. Federal level news for 95 seconds. Then two events outside our country and a stock market report all within 35 seconds. Then two commercials together taking 60 seconds. More federal level news, 23 seconds. One outside event, 7 seconds. This totals 5 and one half minutes news time. By categorical separation, it turns out that half of the total news time period was devoted to happenings at the federal level, what the federal government is up to. Most of the rest is taken up with commercials, and often they play a clear-cut supporting role in the overall psychological impact. Very often there is something in the federal news that sticks or jabs us like a sharp point. Tax increase, war threat, cost of living up, gasoline shortage, or some other crisis situation that affects us, the people, directly but that is being investigated and taken care of by our Federal Government. If we find the news disturbing, there is usually something advertised that is supposed to relieve a headache, an upset stomach, or a stopped-up nose. But if we're okay, yet feel we should do something to make things better, there is an answer for that too. You can join an action group, which is listed in the phone book under Federal Government. You can give money to something of your choice or to stamp out something, or you can write to Box No. X, Washington, D.C., for more information. The news may leave you with the impression that we have a lot of big problems, but that they are all being taken care of by the Federal Government. They even investigate and clean up their own scandalous misbehavior. We learn that some of these scandals have been publicized and pushed back and forth just to make Federal thoroughness look so forthright and honest. It also covers up a lot of behind-the-scenes manipulation. Next time you hear national news on the radio, just try to see what good you're getting out of it in the way of actual news. This is a big nation, and many interesting things are going on every day, but if you hear from a particular location, the chances are that either a great catastrophe happened there or some Federal official was there and had something to say about Federal affairs. Similar observations apply to television, but it is just that much more complicated. So it pretty well boils down to this. We hear mostly Federal Government news, so-called national news, on the networks. Then we have local news selected and compiled by local newscasters. Usually the local newscasts contain more real national news taken from their wire services than we get on the big network coverage. 
Each of us is being isolated from our nation as a whole nation. There is only us and a Federal authority. We are not being allowed to think of our nation as a great, big, busy, buzzing nation with a workforce of 90 million people all working together to create many valuable and interesting things. Would you call this honest, fair, well-rounded, unbiased news coverage? And is it therefore just an accident that lately we are seized repeatedly by unexpected major crises? Be honest now, when was the last time that the actions and policies of our big, powerful government really made sense to you? And when was the last time that things worked out the way they told you they would? Is this news or is it indoctrination? The manipulators don't want us to think about what a big, wonderful nation we have here. They know that if we have time to use our common sense and look at it and evaluate what a prize we own, they'll never be able to take it away from us and make us slaves under their totalitarian dictating control. You may want to be quiet and think this over for a while. When we watch a televised sports event, an entertainment spectacular, or a game show and such like, our mind is almost completely occupied by what somebody else is doing while we are accomplishing little or nothing and are not doing much of our own thinking. A certain amount of this is good recreation, but in excess it steals away too much of our precious time and also confines our mental activity to a very narrow area of thinking. The manipulators don't want us to think for ourselves because they know if we do, we will refuse to be managed and indoctrinated to fit into their plans for total control over us. Why do we have such accurate and highly detailed coverage of sports events when most all else is so jumbled, twisted, or controversial that it's hard to tell one end of it from the other? What's happened to our local entertainment talent? Why do we have to focus our attention on something so produced and controlled as that which comes to us through the networks? Because the manipulators have it rigged that way, that's why. We have heard much controversy about managed news and slanted news. Well, sure it is. It has to be. Everything that is selected and edited is managed. Newspaper editorials, books, newscasts, even live on the scene TV news events. You think live TV couldn't be managed? Then who selects the camera angles and switches the scenes? Who selects the sound pickup and chooses whose voice is heard? You will notice that someone always explains what you see and hear just to make sure you saw what you saw and you heard what you heard. Whether it is managed or slanted, then, is not really the question. The real question is, in whose favor is it managed or slanted? Is it giving something to you, or is it taking something away from you? Are you being given thorough and partial information which you can use to make your own plans and decisions, or are you being pounded continually with ever-worsening problems and Federal plans and decisions? Are you simply given the facts and invited to judge them for yourself, or are you being given a slick presentation of partial truth and being assured by a voice resonant with authority that says, and that's the way it is? You know the answers to these questions if you just let yourself think. Your own voice of common sense gives you the answers if you listen to it instead of being pounded and pressured into believing what is put upon you from outside sources. Try exchanging some of your well-thought-out ideas about these things with other people nearby. You may be surprised at the results. Of course, there may be some who will look at you like some sort of freak at first for thinking your own thoughts but there will be others who will regard you with high respect and seek to cultivate a frequent exchange of ideas. The voice of a fool is easily quieted, but one who speaks with the conviction of truth and makes sense is neither ignored or disregarded. 
It might come in handy to bear in mind that the moment we want something we open up our mind to indoctrination, whether the idea is our own or whether some outside influence has caused us to want it. We can be misled without being lied to. This is done by presenting bits and pieces of truth that appeal to us. As a familiar example, suppose we are looking at a big new heavy automobile. We are told that the extra weight is a safety advantage. Of course, the disadvantage to the other person with less weight is not mentioned. All the comfort and luxury accessories are pointed out. It will not be explained that the radio or music system may drown out a warning signal and cause you to have a wreck. And it will not be mentioned that the luxury accessories are troublesome and expensive to maintain. And it certainly will not be suggested that with all the luxury loading it will do well to get eight miles per gallon. But all these wonderful things can be yours for just a few dollars a month above the cost of something not as good. You can't really afford to settle for less than the best, he says. The experienced individual has learned to be wary of this sort of sucker bait. He has learned to listen to his own common sense to walk away and think it over for a while, then try to make a logical decision. We trustingly expect the news to be neutral and objective, so we just drink it all in without much evaluation. This leaves our guard down to accept all sorts of negative, undesirable indoctrination that is not immediately apparent to us because we have had no experience in this kind of information being put into our minds. Indoctrination broadcasts for selling new federal policies to the American people by way of the electronic communications media got underway in the 1930s when Franklin D. Roosevelt sold his New Deal administration with fireside talks over the radio networks. Many of the emergency measures enacted during that period seemed like good measures at the time but they were the beginning of Federal control policies which have now increased to an almost unbearable level of strangulation. Since that period we have had the New Frontiers Administration of John Kennedy, the Great Society Administration of Lyndon Johnson, and the New Federalism Administration of Richard Nixon. You are free to name the present one whatever you prefer to call it. It may very well be our last administration as a free nation if we fail to use the people power of public opinion to win back majority representation. We sometimes hear someone say, there ought to be a law, or sometimes we hear, why doesn't the government do something? From these little expressions of need, no matter how small or what their origin, the manipulator can publicize these into magnified proportion until Federal action offering a satisfaction of the need is welcomed by the public. This is the way they can take a seed of truth or a minor need and shape Federal control legislation around it that gives them more control over us. In the long run, we always end up losing more than we gain. The Social Security Act of 1935 grew out of a legitimate but temporary need brought about by a depression, but it grew into Federal controls that have not been for the best interests of our American population as a whole. We have always had state and local welfare benefits for those who need help, and these cost much less to maintain than the Federal system. Federal Social Security does not pay out to the recipient nearly as much as can be earned from the same amount invested in any reliable means of investment offered by private free enterprise, even a bank savings account, for example. The smallness of most Social Security checks works a hardship on those depending on them. A retiree risks losing his benefit if he goes out to earn extra needed money. If over his working years he had been able to put his money in the bank instead of having it drained off by Social Security taxes, it would be his own nest egg and he could earn any extra money he wanted to. Under the present system, however, the person on Social Security has been cleverly turned into a prisoner of the Federal Government. 
According to financial experts, the whole system is in a state of financial collapse and is now in debt for over $2 trillion. This is equivalent to $1 million an hour for every hour in a span of 228 years. Hidden taxes are being funneled into the program to keep it going. It is difficult to see how the word security fits in the title of this ill-managed piece of federalism. It is impossible to understand how our elected United States Congressmen are doing nothing at all to correct the faults of this system or admit that the Federal Government can't manage it and turn welfare back to the state and local control. Since 1935 all sorts of benefits have been sold to us, each one based on some kind of need that we are told the Federal Government can handle best. Every single one of them has brought on more Federal control, raised taxes, increased the cost of living, and resulted in less benefit for the majority. Please notice, less benefit for the majority. In addition to Federal taxes, we of course pay various kinds of State and local taxes. These are supposed to get things done close to home that the Federal Government is not supposed to be concerned with, but you probably have noticed that the Federal Government these days is getting its fingers more and more even into things that are supposed to be of local concern only. How is this being managed? Why, through another Federal benefit program something called revenue sharing. The Federal level is supposed to be the top level of government in our country. Below that are the states, then counties, then municipalities, and within the municipalities all kinds of different departments. So why in the name of common sense is somebody in the top Washington office telling the Chicago police chief how to run his department? says he has to follow Federal guidelines in hiring practices to qualify for his revenue sharing needed to run his department. We should find out how come the top office got hold of the Chief's operating cash in the first place. Somehow his money must have been stolen, carried outside his city limits, across county and state lines, and ended up in the top Federal office. Now if he doesn't ignore municipal and county and state regulations, and do like the top office says, he can't have his money back. Whenever there is dissension and general unrest in a company, it is because something is out of order in the management, and management begins at the top. However, the top must always work down through the lower departments in step-by-step -step order. The management must never skip over the authority of any department and give directions directly to one of lower order. This departmental skip-over is being done by our Federal authority and is responsible for a great deal of unrest right now. Executives in the top office don't know beans about running a particular police department and are not supposed to. That's the police chief's job. He is chosen by the local citizenry to perform his duties, and if they are not satisfied, they can throw him out and put in a new chief. The skip-down practice of Federal meddling is going on all over our country, and it makes us try to please several different bosses at the same time. It can't be done, as we all can very plainly see. There is no good reason why the Federal Government needs to collect taxes from us to set up local Federal offices to tell us how to run our business when we are already set up and have been doing it for years. But this is the way the meddling manipulators work. They have our Federal system making more racket than a worn-out washing machine. It would be mighty nice to just unplug the noisy thing for a while until we can get the dirt and scum all cleaned out, stop up the leaks, repair and restore it to its original good working order. That word scum fits in very well here if we think about skimming scum off the top. There are so many top-level bureau and departmental officials who are appointed to their influential positions without being subject to confirmation by our, our representatives. Many of these have not worked their way up through the ranks to acquire experience necessary for the position. Some of the most powerful manipulations are brought into the Federal system through these appointed infiltrators, so while we're cleaning up the machine, we'd better skim off the top level. 
Taking away excessive money is the best skimming tool we can possibly use, like repealing the 16th Amendment, for instance. That would put the IRS out of business. How would you like that? No, the repeal of the 16th Amendment is neither out of reason or unprecedented. The members of Congress are elected to their office by we the people, and they are legal servants of majority public opinion. They have the legal authority and also the legal obligation to obey our majority opinion. If we demand the repeal of the 16th Amendment in majority, they must satisfy our demand by preparing a repeal document to be approved by a three-fourths majority of the states. The 18th Amendment of 1919 became so unpopular that it was repealed in 1933. Why do we make a louder noise over a winning touchdown than we do over having a sickening share of our paycheck withheld as an involuntary contribution to the IRS? Why, oh why? Sure, the federal government needs some operating capital, but not enough to throw away all over the world, not enough to give us benefits we can't afford, not enough to share with us what they shouldn't have taken in the first place, Let's take care of local expenses first. The governing system is our servant, and here we are right here. Our local governing system that regulates our responsibilities is right here where we are. Does it make any sense to send the expense money a long way off and then try to get some of it back to meet our expenses? They call it revenue sharing. We can well afford something above local expenses to maintain state governing costs and the states can manage to share something with the federal system. Under their new constitution, which the manipulators are now very slyly beginning to refer to, it is rigged so that all taxes are to be collected by the Federal Internal Revenue Service. We have been reminded from time to time through commentary on the communications media that we seem to be a nation of apathetic people. This is exactly what the manipulators want us to believe. You know that you yourself are not at all apathetic. With all the oppressive conditions existing around you, how could you be? But if you believe that the people of our nation are apathetic as a whole, then you think, I wish I could do something, but what's the use? Nobody else cares. They wouldn't help, so there's nothing I can do. This is just another method of indoctrination they use to keep your mind in the hypnotic spell of their great image of power. We, the people, are really like a bed of smoldering embers, very hot and alive under a cover of ashes. All we need to generate a powerful flaming heat is a breath of fresh air to blow aside the ashes and nourish the embers into a glowing heat of awareness as to what is happening. Then the roaring flame of counteraction will burst forth. Let's rekindle the flame of our national spirit, the pioneering spirit of a free nation, our beloved United States of America. Our constitutional representative governing structure guarantees freedom from taxation without representation because our Founding Fathers fought for. But the manipulators are tearing up this guarantee piece at a time. You are witnessing this destruction, and you know it. We are again right back in the circumstances our Founding Fathers fought to gain our freedom from, taxation without representation. Beware of any government official who refers to our nation as a democracy. Whether he does this deliberately or through ignorance, his representation of our best interests is very, very questionable. We must carefully avoid radicalism, sensationalism, and hate. These are destructive emotions that dilute and weaken sound judgment that cause mob violence and hysteria. This message is one of love for you and your individual role as an important member of We the People. We respect the creative efforts of those who have built our greatness as a free nation. We respect each other as individual contributors to our present and our future. We hold in our minds and our willing hands the power and the direction of our nation and its future. It is our minds and our willing hands that write and enforce the laws that operate the levers, valves, switches, and wheels of industry, that till the soil and harvest the crops, that make our tools and drive our trucks, and write the checks that pay our taxes. It's our nation. We built it. We run it. 
then does it make any sense at all to let a few manipulators use their clever schemes of indoctrination to make us use our own minds and our own hands to bind ourselves into their dictatorial servitude? Ours is the real power because it is people power and public opinion power, but like any other power it has to be turned on to use it. Please turn on your common sense now while you are still free to use it. They may announce a crisis shortage of that too any day now and try to make you believe you've just used up all of yours. It's time now, in fact, we're running late, to spread the word to those nearby to encourage them to go forth and keep it spreading. But don't try to beat your listener over the head with a lot of radical, uncoordinated, babbling, patriotic nonsense. He'll just shake his head and walk away. First, put your own thoughts in order so they fit you and your own personality. Establish what you know to be fact and what your real honest opinions are. Then you will possess the power of your own convictions and your own common sense. Then you will command authority above the level of rumor or hearsay. Know what you are talking about. But be careful to not talk down to those around you like you're real smart and they're stupid. Be calm and patient until the opportunity allows you to speak then ask his opinion about such and such. This is the way to get it started. If you just run up all excited and blurt out something, you've blown your chance. Just use your own good judgment. That's what it's for. This message has now become your own personal property. It is in your mind to do with as you please. No one else has the right to tell you what to think, but they still have the right to suggest. A suggestion is, first, be calm and thoughtful. Ask yourself, does any of this make sense? Am I satisfied that all is as it should be? Am I getting out of life all that I should? Are taxes and prices like they should be? Does my federal government make me feel secure and contented? You may have a hundred more questions, all important questions, because you are an important individual and your voice is representative in forming the circumstances you have to live in. When you have established yourself firmly on the solid foundation of your own convictions, then please act, beginning right where you are. Our power is the sum of us all, and we're all over the nation, not just in Washington, D.C., or in one small isolated community. We possess altogether power, the greatest earthly power known to man, if we will but use it. We have the choice, either we use it or we lose it right now. Now it is in your hands as well as mine. Thank you for your attention. May God bless you. Tom Wilson